2000 S10 Chevy pickup. The, the, the electric motor is a Warp 9. Uh -huh. It has a full operating manual five-speed transmission, clutch style. Uh, batteries are high power. It's got a Soliton controller, a REAP Systems BMS, and a Brusa charger. It's a DC system? DC system because of the Warp 9. A Warp 9. What was your goal and what were you able to achieve? Our goal was to make a good delivery vehicle that we can run all over the city of Topeka, picking up and delivering. Uh, you can stick six, eight hundred pounds of weight in the back of the bed, go deliver out on the highway and it'll still run 65 and 70. Come back, send it out again. Uh, we are, one of our goals was to try to eclipse the 100 mile range on a uh -huh. single charge. The best to date is 95.4 at average between 45 and 50 mile an hour. So now that the, uh, you don't have a full battery pack in this thing yet, is that correct? Yeah, we're waiting on a guy to help us finish getting all of our battery pack stuff squared away, and uh, we'll get it. We'll get it, and when it gets here, if you do the math, it should go between 120 and 140 miles on a single charge. Mm -hmm. But right now, you can run it between 60 and 70 every day. Take it home, plug it in. You're ready to go another 60 or 70 without any questions of wasting kilowatts. You just drive it like you would your gas engine. If you want to spin the tires, you spin the tires and go. 60 to 70 miles every day. If you're wanting that 95 or 100, there are some, you have to have very conservative values to drive your vehicle at that to get that kind of mileage. It's just like your gasoline car. If you want it to go 20 miles a gallon, you have to like an egg on between your foot and the throttle. But if you're just everyday driving and don't care about mileage, you'll get 60 to 70 out of it. You just go. This here is a Soliton controller. Uh-huh. Uh, you guys are in love with that Solitron controller, I'll bet. I would say out of all of them that we've experienced, been around, uh, been associated with, it is superior that's just my personal opinion. Okay. If somebody wants one, we've put, we've had it, what, three, four weeks now? And we're over 600, 700 miles that we've been driving it. That's how much we've drove this thing. Uh-huh. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory under here. Well, uh, have you got air conditioning on this? Yes, there is. I'll get the uh, prop rod and we'll take the lid off. Okay. And uh, and uh, the... Always disconnect yeah. the battery Absolutely. supply. Good idea. I've had people tell me that, oh, that won't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love that. Oh. My gosh. You guys are all set up to show this thing off. Well, you can see air conditioner still there, alternator still there. This is our vacuum pump for power brakes. Uh -huh. You can see the warp nine down under there. This is our heating system. Heating system across there. Uh huh. Pump runs back up through the heater core. Does all the defrosting and all that. So you got a heater, you got air conditioning, you got all the future comforts and only power steering, power brakes. We took the power steering off the first design, and I will be sticking the power steering back on. I see. Uh, that's the last component that we're going to stick back on it. I see. And do you have uh, not any problems with the power steering at all? Uh, uh, and it, it just you decided to take it off and we took it off for the simple fact we was trying to conserve our wattage to get our mileage and that's when it was lead acid batteries uh-huh and now since we're to the lithium stuff we're not so much concerned about it because uh, I don't think it'll hinder that much we'll still get our 60 to 70 every day uh-huh and it'll be easier for the end user 
I imagine you experienced a dramatic uh, improvement when you went to lithium batteries. Yes, there was the the discharge rate when you go to accelerate. That's the biggest thing you'll notice, besides just the range and the mileage that you can you can accomplish. But the acceleration rate to lead acid, there's not as much voltage sag. Uh, it's just better all the way around. Ah. How long does it take you to charge this thing up? Between, after 60 to 70 miles, eight hours, plug it in while you're sleeping at night, get in the next morning and go. Wow. Well, I think it'll actually charge in about four and a half to five. I've kind of calculated, but it'll go through and it'll charge up. Then the next time the BMS shuts it down, equalizes, recharge, equalizes, until our voltages and stuff come down. The BMS, that's the battery management system. Yes, not battery monitoring, management. Yeah. There's a big difference there. Amen. So, a lot of people think they've got a BMS. Yes, the letters say it's BMS, but there is a difference between monitoring and management. Yep. Can I see inside the... Uh, yes, the sir. Oh, man, you got a lot of stuff in there. Tell me about it. Okay. The four green panels there, uh -huh. that's the REAP system BMS. That's part of your battery management system. Okay. Right. The Brusa charger, everybody knows what they are. A the battery charger. Battery yeah. charger. The okay. other one's just a small charger to 12 volt to help charge up our 12 volt battery. Now some cars they got what they call a DC to DC converter and they convert the DC from the battery into the charger. Right. But that also robs from your main battery pack. Yes, that's And true. there's there's no sense in doing that. A lot of people do it because it's easier. They don't have to put belts and do some engineering to make it all work. Uh-huh. But fabrication is, is easy to do. Uh -huh. So the small transformer that's mounted there. That now, when you plug the battery charger in, did both of those chargers working simultaneously, you just plug in one plug or do you have to plug in two? No, we plug in one plug. Look what we got here. Uh, it just... And we got the oh. dog here. Yeah. <laughs> the dog is. He likes electric truck. Yeah, he does. He likes to be the star of the show. <laughs> that's for dang sure. Well, that's pretty neat. Uh, you got the uh, batteries in the the bed here, huh? Yes, sir. And uh, and you've got how many batteries in this thing? There's 48 cells. And you still got room in the bed. Tell me about what you can haul in this thing with this. We. Bed. We haul electric motors. I mean, that's what we are, is electric motor shop. Uh -huh. And we haul and deliver repaired as well as new. Uh, uh -huh. We've put 600 pounds in it just the other day, and I have to make a delivery to a company, and they're about 10 miles away, and it's all highway. And uh -huh. it'll still run 65 out on the highway. Let's see now, Harry. Do you have any gauges or anything in here? BMS fired up? Oh, here it is. These three gauges here, that's pack voltage. Mm -hmm. This is motor amperage, mm -hmm. motor voltage. Oh, That's okay. what we're using to the motor. The charger and the BMS are on a CAN system. Uh -huh. And if the BMS finds or notices a problem... CAN is a communication system. Central Area Network is what yeah. that is. I think that's, the, that's what right. they call it. Okay. The BMS does not make the battery charger grow up in voltage or changes parameters, all it can do is it brings it down in voltage so it'll finalize the charge. But if you have one cell that takes off and jumps up quick like lithium will tend to do sometimes, this BMS reads cell to cell, temperature cell to cell, pack voltage, high cell, low cell, and plus the other, how do I say this, battery health, battery amperage, uh, amper to hour, it measure to, measures and monitors a lot. It has a state of charge meter on that, so similar to a fuel gauge. Everything is out here in the open and they can see what we've done because you stand here and tell them something, yeah it's got this, it's got that, but if you can't see it, proof's in the pudding type say. That's what I was just going to say, the proof's in the pudding and we're going to find out when we take a ride. Yes we will. Hey Kevin, we're ready to go for a ride. <laughs> okay. You're ready to 
Give me a show of what this thing can do. Okay. Uh, I'm used to not hearing any noise because I've driven electrics before, but uh, never heard. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A little jerk and peel. I don't know whether you heard those tires squeal, but they did. Uh, and that's what the controller said at 50%. Wow. The controller's at 50%. And uh, you're drawing how many amps right now? I'm in third gear, running 35 mile an hour, pulling about 60 amps. There's 50 right oh, there. Oh, man. So smooth. We're going 60 miles an hour. We're going down the freeway. 63, 64, 190, 108, 90 amps in fourth gear. Uh -huh. Just as sweet as can be. Now, I don't see any officers. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, okay. There's 75. Yeah. 75, you're still in fourth gear. There's 80. 80. <laughs> now here we come up on the, the slow cars. Yeah, dang it. <laughs> you think going to run a 100 mile an hour, Carl? I felt like it could go quite a bit better. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this is our... Hey, we can, I don't know if I can... If I can... We can try this. I uh, Get around that guy. I'm going to... We didn't get to 100, but the traffic was in the in the way. All right. Will it run 100 mile an hour, Carl? I, I think it will. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Kevin. One of these days when the road's kind of cleared off with the traffic, <laughs> why don't you come out here and call me up and tell me about it, okay? I can do that. What did you think? I'm impressed. It's yeah. very smooth at speed. It's got plenty of oof. And it'll easily do much more than we did. Well, we got into a traffic jam. We couldn't go any further because it was cars ahead of us that wouldn't. No, we, we did 90 and it, it easily will go more. We went know. into fifth gear and we ran into traffic again. Oh. But he got a picture of speedometer at 90, 93 or four or something like that. Oh.